here. Oh yeah, and uh, all of the other hangouts have already been dealt with. All landings reached. I got all of the achievements for all of these uh, hangouts. So, the newest one still needs to be done. So, let's get started. Hangout event Lynette. Checks and cats. Begin hangout. What they say is true. You have to see the world right. for yourself to appreciate Let's how go. beautiful it is. Where do we have to go? Go to the area near Hotel de Boer. Okay. Uh, so, Hotel de Boer. Wait. Wait. Where am I? Ah, oh, okay, okay. I see. So, um... I'm, st I'm just going to teleport. I'm not going to walk there. <laughs> it also delayed me quite a lot as well. Oh, yeah. Still, I want to take it slow. I want to be able to understand, understand every minute details uh, in order to be able to understand the lore and um, all of the, the, well, the connections between characters as much as possible. Uh, to make some connections later when I want to. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Hey, Lynette. Seems you are with a cat. Quite fitting, isn't it? <laughs> Is that Lynette? With a little kitty? With a yellow bow? Now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now? Okay. Um. It's, um. She's. She's, um. She's really working. I mean, talking with the chat, so. Let's just say, what are you up to? <laughs> yeah, okay, so this wasn't a bad. Uh, this wasn't a good choice. But but if you if you approached stealthily, she would still be um, afraid. Because oh, cats are sensitive to sounds and um, and presence uh, near them. So you would have realized. Either way, let's move on. Oh, ah. it's you. <laughs> oh, second. it's you. Now activating oh, chat mode. Oh, she, oh, she's talking. Bad, bad. <laughs> Didn't hear that first. Uh, activating chat mode. Yeah, well, uh. I do activate chat mode sometimes. You made me jump there. I thought they'd finally caught me. Thought they'd finally caught you? Wait. Uh. Wait, wait. Is someone out to kidnap you? Objectively speaking, the trouble was entirely of my own making. Okay. So, if the trouble's entirely of your own mating, what happened? Half an hour ago, I was at Hotel de Boer for a drinks reception. It was to celebrate the successful opening yes. of a show, but it was draining my energy. So, I waited for the right moment, then snuck away so I could switch to standby mode. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> was to celebrate the successful opening of a show. But uh, you weren't quite feeling it, so... So you snuck away. I see. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Uh, so they sent someone to find you and bring you back. Why? Um, probably because I'm playing the lead role in the show. You're... The lead role? 
Is that so surprising? No. I'm always getting invitations to do solo performances. I just usually get Linny to write back and turn them down. But then came the Fontanalia Film Festival. Yeah. Fontanalia Film Festival. That was special, to be honest. Jovaros, <laughs> you can cheap your mora, and you can go to hell. <laughs> We took all the kids from the House of the Hearth out to see a film. And after it finished, they all started clamoring for me to try out acting for some reason. Even Linny was chanting along with them. Yeah, I mean, because Linny can see the potential in his sister. I mean, who doesn't? Anyway, it just so happened that a director called Mary who had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but mm -hmm. basically, I ended up accepting it. Oh. So, a director called Mario had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but basically, I ended up accepting it. So, this is the dramatic debut of the magi magician's puppet, huh? Yep, you nailed it. I'm playing the role of a puppet. A puppet with the two thumbs up. Yep, getting a uh, role of the puppet. <laughs> In fact, the show's called The Lost Puppet, and it's a masked mime show, so I don't have to do any facial expressions or say any lines, literally, mm -hmm. just a series of physical movements. The director says it's a very avant garde art form. Oh, okay. Uh, just, um, it's just a mime. You're, ah, so the puppet doesn't talk. It does sound pretty avant-garde, but uh, can people understand the plot? Art is not comprehended by the mind, but felt in the heart. At least, that's what the director says. Hmm? Anyway, if nothing else, the opening performance seemed to go down well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> the opening performance seemed to go down well. Nice. I mean, that's nice for the director Mario and as for you as well. It will be a uh, as thing um, as the uh, last puppet show or in this play. Maybe in this show. At the drinks reception, everyone was crowding around me, saying, Triumphant character portrayal, faithful adaptation of the original work, unequivocally, quintessentially avant-garde, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, people with their way of expressing compliments. <laughs> Even with uh, the fact that Lynette doesn't really understand uh, what they're saying, but it's like compliments, all right. But being the center of attention is draining. So the moment they left me to go harass the director instead, I was out of there. Once you weren't able to use Linny as a human shield, right? The other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. The other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. Is it, um... Wait, what kind of weird? Hey, chat. <laughs> meow, to, meow to you. Oh, sorry, Bonnie. I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation. My bad. Oh, the chatting's name's Bonnie. Yeah, okay. Uh, I take it, uh, Boney's your death chat? No, we just met. We bumped into each other right after I slipped away. And, uh, you've already named her? Well, it'd be kind of difficult for us to communicate otherwise. Besides, I think she's taken a liking to the name. Haven't you, Bonnie? 
And yeah, seems like it. Seems to respond to the name. Bonnie. Yeah, that's right. Good kitty. We'll go find your owner soon, I promise. Wait. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Ahem. Um, owner. Now let's trade chat then. Nope. She's wearing a collar, and for the most part, she's pretty well groomed. Yeah, I saw that. If she is a stray, she hasn't been for long. That too. Her stomach's been growling a lot. I guess she must have been missing for a few days now. As much as I'd love to hang out with her for a while longer, her owner's probably worried sick about her. <laughs> Assuming she has an owner, that is. Assuming that is, yeah. But the reception. I should probably show my face there again at some point. Even if it's just to make excuses and leave again. Mm, decision time. Oh yeah, so when she says decision time, I suppose that we are going to have to make the, the choice here. Yeah. Uh, you know, is this a tough decision for you? Well, I just find it exhausting. Thinking through all the different ramifications of different choices and so on. That's more Lenny's area than mine. So, unless it's something really important, I usually just leave the decision making to him. Um, for once, he's not here when you need him, so... But that doesn't happen often. It's fine. He got Fermine to make me a little something for just the situation. And what is that little something you're speaking of? Poof! A photometer. A photometer. Oh, was that? Wasn't that the um, the the um, the 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 thing that they uh, showed in the uh, special program? Photometer. So there's a card that poofs from uh, from the the. the the hat and based on the number that you get you're in your lucky day or not it looks pretty over the top i know but it's essentially just a box of cards he kept the design simple so it'd be yeah. harder to break the way it works is i pick a card at random then look at the number on the card Oh, so you pick your card at random and look at the number on the card. And how does that help you make your decision? Well, for example, if the number on the card is five or higher, I help Bonnie find her owner. If it's less than five, oh, I go back okay. to the reception. So... Five or higher, you help the cat. Five or lower, go to the reception. Oh no, it's less than five. Go to the reception. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's luck. It's uh, what's luck going to choose for you? It's uh, simple and straightforward. I just have to believe in the bond between me and my cards. And my fate will reveal itself to me in numerical form. At least, that's what Linny said. Anyway, I guess I'll give you a demonstration. Yeah, sure. Please show me. Now, you as well, Boney. As Lynette attempts to draw a child, the device emits uh, a horrendous sound. I didn't like that. Was I using it wrong? Hmm. Maybe if I just... Net smets the child bots so the child's fallen to the ground. Clearly, there's some design flaws to iron out. I'll have to let Fremine know. I feel like, uh, maybe this wasn't a design issue. 
Let's see, which card did I get? Four. Four? Yeah, less than five. That means no helping Boney. Seems. That's cruel, but does that fate for you? Well, the cards fell on the ground though, so I don't think it counts as fate. Ah, I see. If you want to get the right answer, you have to let fate decide. Also something Linny said. So, to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. Wait, wait. So, to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. Pretty sure I, um, I think I'm pretty sure when I say that. But really, what Lini, what Lini really meant is sometimes you have the answer you didn't want. Real uh, realization. Um, or why don't you pick a card? Since I ran into you here, that Me? means uh, our fates are like. Interfering with each other. Ooh. Wait, wait. <laughs> this is like a Mona situation, where where um, uh, she will tell us to help her uh, see what her fate is like. But now it's with cards. We have to pick a card. Okay, we have to pick a card to see. If uh, the fate that has been uh, given to Lynette right there is being interfered by the fact that we are together or with each other at this point in time. So I have a choice here. It's either you should leave the Razzle Dazzling to Lini or... All right, I'll pitch another card for you. Hmm. I guess what I will do is that I'm feeling, um, I feel like uh, I'll help her do that first, and then we'll see what Lini does. So, all right, I'll pitch another card for you. Thank you. This one is final, I promise. Yeah. Here, take the fatometer. If it's five or above, that means fate successfully changed. Anything lower than five is a fail. Okay. I, I get it. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. <laughs> now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Got a good problem solver here to help. I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Hmm. Wait. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. Now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Let's let's just um be the course. Let's see how that goes. Quite curious. Fatometer, I'm not sure. Let's leave this one to fate. Alright. Then let's see where fate will lead me. Alright. Okay, let's see. The random checks triggered by the photometer often serve as indicators for destiny's course or the success or failure of an action. Press to draw a card and get a random number between 1 and 20. The number displayed is greater than or equal to the check difficulty. You will pass this check, otherwise you will fail it. Uh, doesn't seem like I understood quite much what that said. The random checks 
triggered by the photometer, often serve as indicators for destiny's course. Or the success of or failure of an action. Okay, have a look. Adequate preparation and friendly aid can sometimes affect the results of these checks. Your current check bonuses will... Your current check bonuses will be added to your randomly drawn number, making it easier to pass checks. Check objective 5. Wait some turn. Draw a card. Draw this one. Check failed. <sighs> Back to the drinks reception. Just like that. So, the cards said, yeah, you get your ass back to the reception. I'm sorry, girl. Uh, I have to ask about this deck of cards. There's 20 cards in total, numbered 1 to 20. So there's only a 1 in 5 chance of drawing less than a 5. 1 in 5 chance. Right. I should also mention, this time the cutoff was 5, but I just set that to wherever I feel like. I mean, really don't want to go. You could just... Nope. I said it was your decision. I'm not gonna waste any more energy dragging my feet. Besides, the drinks reception is technically part of the job as an official publicity event. So, if I bail on it... You'll feel guilty inside, right? I might get sued for breach of contract, and that would be a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, one other thing. Do you want to come with me? If you're free, I mean. Uh, sure. And you'll have at least one friend there. Mm hmm Thanks. See? See how her ears... Uh, twitched. That's a nice attention to details. <laughs> I have to go to the fatometer. Let, let me have a look at that. So this gadget will help this side on what I want to do next. <laughs> um, a deceptively grandiose looking card box that is actually quite simple. The number drawn seems to indicate a certain direction of fate, or perhaps the success or failure of a certain choice. As long as you believe in your bonds with the cards, the numbers shown will show your fate. Since Lenny said that, let's just into Integrally take his word with a shake of salt. Me, let me place that. There it is. Uh, let's draw a card. 13. See? Right there. It was better than 5. <laughs> that. I mean. Lynette? Where did you disappear to? Leone and I have been looking everywhere for you. Wait, where did you get the cat? Leon and Argalia. The hostess of the Hotel de Boer. They are practically similar. I Ow. found her outside. Do either of you happen to recognize her? Um, I don't think so. Could belong to one of the guests, I suppose. <sighs> Fair enough. That was a long shot. 
Yeah. So sorry we couldn't help you, Lynette. Uh, don't worry. We'll ask around for you. Leone's probably just being forgetful. Maybe you could leave her with us. We'll take her to the reception desk and see if they know anything. And if not, we'll just keep looking. You know what, Leon? Of the voice actor um, for Leon is, uh, it seems like might be the voice actor for Nahida. Same voice, voice actor for, for Nahida. At least I think. Could be wrong. Sure. I would help, but I'm a little preoccupied. Sorry to dump this on you. It's no trouble at all. We're happy to help however we can. Also, uh, if it's no trouble, I mean, could we maybe get an autograph? And maybe a photo, too? You want a photo with Lynette? <laughs> uh... <gasps> Leone! You can't spring that on her now. Not while she's working. Leone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> at least wait until the event's finished. One last thing, Lynette. Director Mary is looking for you. We'll take the cat to the front desk now. See you later. <sighs> oh, you're so popular, Lynette. Uh, I'm not usually required at these kinds of events, so I don't even have an event mode. All right, guess I'd better go see and the director. Oh. Yeah, you guys have um, an event mode, chat, uh, chat mode. Yeah, I right, would like to see how that goes. An event mode. Well, you understand what's the difference between being home, friends, or your family, and being at work, uh, or when. You when you work in, in in retail, for example, and you have, and you have to smile, and definitely, even though uh, clients or customers are, well, shouting at you, because they're mad about something, has to say the course, is uh this is an uh, event mode, or work mode, in that sense, yeah, uh, that's interesting. Spectacular choreography, Ooh. a masterpiece of mise en scène, and the performance, oh my, groundbreaking, dripping with the uh, je ne sais quoi. My congratulations on another magnificent show, <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, let me see that again. This is uh, you you know you're in Fontaine with this one. Uh, spectacular choreography, a masterpiece of mise en scène, and the performance, oh my, groundbreaking, drip, dripping with je ne sais quoi. <laughs> my, uh, my congratulations on another magnificent show, sir. Yes, yes, I for one was particularly Maury. captivated Tick. by the clearly Tick. allegorical narrative undertones. The Lost Puppet shines a spotlight on the impact of technological advances in our modern society, particularly as they relate to changing modes of emotional expression and the challenge of mutual changing intelligibility. <laughs> yeah, The Lost Puppet shines a spotlight on the impact of technological advances in our modern society. Uh, I'll, uh, call it Chaplin, maybe? Uh, I want the society particularly as they relate to changing modes of emotional expression. And she was just talking about the fact that she doesn't have an event mode. 
Such a pioneering work, so far ahead of its time. A tour de force of avant-garde theater. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you didn't know French before, there's a lot of French words in, <laughs> in here. Tour de force. Tour de force of avant-garde theater. Yeah, when it comes to theater and plays and all that, a lot of French words that keep coming back, or French group words. <laughs> I can learning. already see the headlines of tomorrow's newspapers. They will certainly be singing your praise, Director Mary You. Yeah, it will. <laughs> but it was a group effort, of course, oh, to convey Mary emotions in a so this is show with no facial expressions. The entire cast had to go above and beyond. Everyone truly outdid themselves. But one in particular really outshines them all and outdid themselves. That one is none other than Lynette. <laughs> Speaking of the cast, Jillian, another strong performance from you in director Mary Yu's latest show, as of course we've all come to expect from your numerous successful collaborations to date. <laughs> That's quite an overstatement. This I've one, only this ever one played the supporting roles. On that role. point, you stated a few months ago in an interview that you were looking to secure a leading role in your next show. What led you to the decision to stay in a supporting role this time around? Um. Um. <clears throat> we had a discussion about this, and while Lynette hadn't previously performed in an acting role, we were blown away by her talent, and she was a perfect fit for this character. Perfect fit for the character, for this character. Doesn't have to talk. Doesn't have to talk. And who doesn't have to show any uh, facial expression. Quite simply, this was the role she was born to play. Exactly. I was honored to share the stage with her. Lynette worked extremely hard in all of the rehearsals, and she's an incredibly talented actress. <laughs> yeah. And she, here she is. Oh, Lynette's back! Hey, Lynette, where have you been? <laughs> Are you in standby mode? Some reports say you switched that state to recharge after a show. <laughs> That's so funny. The fact that even reporters, um, and, uh, uh, people around her thought using um, these modes to re reference the fact that she is trying to recharge batteries or uh, she uh, wants to talk or something like that. Yeah, that's really uh, interesting. Ah, oh, method acting, of course. Such a compelling portrayal of a mechanical puppet could only be achieved by an actor who lives and breathes their role even while off stage. Mm -hmm. Those seemingly stilted movements were in fact an inspired portrayal of the character. The ostensibly bad acting, in reality, was the product of supreme acting skill. Seemingly stilted movements were in fact an inspired portrayal of the character. The ostensible bad acting in reality was the product of the supreme of supreme acting. Yeah, she they are really praising her. Oh, uh I went outside and there was this cat there, so 
I played with the cat for a bit. A cat? <laughs> We've long heard that you were a kind soul, as well as an incredible actress. No wonder your debut performance has garnered such popularity. Okay. This show looks on track to break box office records for avant-garde theater. Lynette, any words for the fans? Any words for the fans? Um, not really, no. Uh, I believe Lynette is trying to say that the act of performance itself is the actor's true means of connecting with their fans. Oh, I see. Lynette, any comments? <sighs> she's not in chat mode right now. Or oh, maybe she's too embarrassed or to even talk with them. Mm-hmm. Right, oh. exactly. Mm hmm right. <laughs> But don't you want the fans to know how you're feeling right now? After the hugely successful opening of your first ever show? That's true. I'm sure the fans would love to learn a bit more about you, too. How interesting. Inside. Serve Lynette to see how she's doing. failed <laughs> okay the so Lynette's answers all sound very calm seems fine Lynette how do you find acting compares with performing in a magic show it's what quite does different. the future hold for you Lynette I mean, you have to hold the stage but uh And struggles to keep up to make sure that she's in the daily profession. Eh, are you alright? Yeah, it's just. <sighs> Turns out I can't cope with this stuff even in tea party mode. Oh, so you were in tea party mode because you don't have an event mode. I understand, I understand. Tea party mode? Hmm. It's a power saving mode for participating in conversation at tea parties. Normally, I can get through an entire conversation just with... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. And... How interesting. <laughs> that reminds me, um, that reminds me of, uh, of Jean Lee at the end of the Archon Quest when, uh, when, um, we were talking about how, uh, Nouvellet and Jean Lee never crossed paths, um, during this whole event. And, uh, and is that so? <laughs> this was his go to response or answer when. <laughs> Or, or we were talking about asking him that. Yeah. So funny. We all have, um, we all have, uh, how should I say this? Yeah, we all have specific type responses, answers, if we can get to if we are trying to save energy, trying to do something with a lot of complex sentence stuff like that here yeah i understand the concept <laughs> but at a tea party i'm not normally subjected to a constant stream of questions <sighs> the energy consumption of that interview just now was three times as much as the average tea party It's a big adjustment. It's some time. 
I think I'd rather pray that I never have to do it again. Yeah, well, uh... Sorry, Lynetta. I don't want to break it to you like that, but... If... You intend to keep going through... This, um... Lost Puppet show... That is attracting... Fans... It... Might become... Well, you might have to become used to it. Lynette? Director Maryu would like you to join the Real group active. photo to commemorate the successful <laughs> opening of the show. A group photo? Mm -hmm. It's just the members of the troupe, along with Maloney and Corentin. Everyone's waiting for you. <sighs> All right, then. See you in a minute. That's in Cyril go to the, do the Three, group photo. Three, two, one, smile. My thanks to each and every one of you here for your help in making The Lost Puppet a success. The group photo is already being printed as I speak. Even more coverage. You can collect your copy from the first floor after the drinks reception concludes. May it serve as a reminder of this fabulous performance every time you see it. Marry you! <laughs> Get over here. Let's have another drink. There's a few things I need you to glance over for me. Wait. That means... The reception isn't over? Uh, the reception still isn't over? I thought the group photo was the final hurdle. Well... At least there's no more people hounding me with questions. I just need to find somewhere to switch to standby mode, and the time will fly by. I hope. Hope. Oh. Don't know about that. Go to the second floor to pass time. Alright. I'm good. Alright. Second floor. Farina? No one told me Farina would be here. <sighs> Hotel de Boer's Eau Flutante is as wonderfully sweet as ever. Hotel. <laughs> yeah. He, he got quite a liking to the Eau Flutante of Hotel uh, Il de Boer's. Uh, Hotel de Boer's <laughs> Eau Flutante. Yeah. He has a sweet tooth, that's for sure. <laughs> Rowena. Managed to get an invite to the drinks for reception too? Traveler? Lynette? Oh, wait, hold on. What do you mean, manage to get an invite? <laughs> I'm an expert in the dramatic <laughs> arts. Of course I was invited. Yeah. Okay. Naturally, people wanted to hear my comments on the emerging art form that is the Masked Mime Show. So then, what do you think? Remarkable, and a very worthwhile artistic endeavor. Exploring a character with no lines or facial expressions, who can only communicate how they feel through their movement. Yeah. Your performance was beyond anything I could have imagined, Lynette. Clearly, this was a very suitable role for you indeed. Uh, Pat if checks a special type of checks that need not be actively triggered. Instead, will automatically trigger at times. To pass, you will find some hidden information, such as irregularities in the person's attitude. Or certain incongruous details. Option chat success. You seem to hear some. If you listen closely, you hear some small noise coming from the back corner. Huh? Hmm? Is something wrong? 
No, it's nothing. Please go on. Oh, it... Basically, I think I'd give it a positive review overall. Just not as gushing as the crowd downstairs. So, you thought they were pretty over the top, too? Mm, in fairness, it's normal to bring along some vocal supporters for publicity when a new show opens. But still, this was something else. Mm -hmm. Then again, I'm no specialist in avant-garde theater. Uh, maybe I'm just not well acquainted with their review criteria. Yeah. Or maybe it's because I came to the show with some preconceived expectations. I did happen to see the original draft of Mary U's script a while back. Original draft of Mary's script a while back. What original draft? Oh? He didn't show it to you? It must have been a few months ago. He came to me to get some advice from an experienced performer's perspective. And then asked if I could write a few reviews of his new play. I had a lot on my plate at the time, so I had to turn him down. I only skimmed a few sections, but mm -hmm. they seemed quite different from the final version. I can't say I remember the plot, but... I don't know. The protagonist just seemed more... complex, I guess? Especially in the last two scenes. Still a mechanical puppet on the outside, of course, but she seemed to have more emotional depth on the inside. Emotional depth? Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking aloud here. Don't take it to heart. Besides, a script and a play are two very different beasts. There are so many fine details to consider when turning a story into a stage production. More than most people could imagine. Especially with a novel art form like a masked mind show. I'm sure Mary Yu had his reasons for the changes he made. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Ahem. Change of topic. I see you've escaped the crowds to seek refuge on the second floor. Fame can be overwhelming at first, can't it? Uh, perhaps you'd benefit from hearing about the experiences of a veteran celebrity such as myself. Ah, Farina, you're the best. No thanks, I'm good. Pretty sure this will be my first and last time in this situation. Uh, hey, at least let me finish. I have top tips on dealing with belligerent reporters. Slipping away to hunt down snacks during the intermission. <laughs> hunt down snacks. Mm. Tell me everything. Now she's eater. <laughs> First, take a seat, mon ami. We must partake of Hotel de Boer's fine desserts as we talk, lest they go to waste. Three of you enjoy some delectable treats hmm. as the reception comes that to close. That was very educational. That was very educational. Educational? <laughs> Isn't the word I'd use. They didn't mention acting once in the whole conversation. I expect most of the people downstairs have left by now. Time to grab my copy of the group photo and get home. Go back to the first floor in the ancient envelope. Arena is not here anymore. These guys here now. These people seem to be distrusting the content of tomorrow's newspapers. Get too close.
Go downstairs now. <laughs> I can go back to the first floor to take the envelope. No one here anymore. The photo must be in this envelope right here. Ah, <sighs> it's finally over. Thank you for sticking around for so long. If it wasn't for you, I don't know how I would have standby mode in my way through the last few hours. Any normal person would find an event like this stressful. Enough to warrant Lynette leaving halfway through. And you left the event midway. What was the real reason? <clears throat> I mean, if you really don't want to talk about it i understand it's fine it's just it was such a minor thing okay while i was on stage there was a moment when i felt like someone was looking at me it was only for an instant and i didn't even see who it was but somehow I knew it was a look of contempt. I got a vague sense of it again during the reception. Like someone was giving me an evil stare. But I couldn't figure out who it was. Normally, I'm used to lurking in the shadows on the stage and spying on other people. So, it was strange. Feeling like I was the one being spied on this time. Did it have something to do with the original script for the Man? Or someone just took a disliking to me for no real reason. Sometimes you can like one person and dislike another for equally pointless reasons. Anyway, it was just a momentary stink eye, that's all. Nothing for you to worry about. Okay. Well, uh, if you're not worried, I'm not worried. Okay, problem solved. I'm gonna take this envelope and go home now. Next envelope. You heart, you heartless puppet. You've ruined. You heartless puppet, you've ruined this work. Hand over the role of lead actress immediately. <laughs> Excuse me, what? It's a threat letter? You have destroyed this work of art. Step down from the leading role at once. Based on the tone, I'd say threat letter is right. <clears throat> to whoever wrote this letter, that is going to suffer the wrath of the rock made by Jean Lee, my geo daddy. <laughs> this is far more serious than a momentary steam guy. We need to get to the bottom of it. Yeah back to what was happening on the first floor while we were taking them out. There were a lot of people downstairs at the time. Any one of them could have slipped the letter into the envelope. All the envelopes were left on the table on the first floor, but nobody was tasked with watching them. I could ask reception 
It's unlikely they saw anything. Examine the letter to see if there is anything amiss. The unsealed envelope contained the group photo, the threat letter, and some photographs of Lynette from during the show. It's definitely meant for her. The letter demands that Lynette step down from the leading role. Up short of seeing what will happen if she doesn't. It was, it was um an actress, uh, during the um the interview session. And there was a reporter saying like, um. That. Was it a reporter or a critique? Either way, they were saying like, yeah, um, you have a supporting role. You should have you should have asked for. Be the, the lead role. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Neither of us recognized the handwriting. It's messy. Perhaps it covered their tracks. Maybe this person just has messy handwriting. I don't think we're gonna find any more clues here. Shall we ask Mario what he makes of a destroyed this work of art? Yes, let's. Whatever destroyed means, it could have something to do with the original script that Farina mentioned. Also, yep. I'm going to have to ask you to stick around a while longer. Sure. I'll be your bodyguard. Don't you worry about it. Ah, I can't believe how well the whole Lynette's debut acting role thing worked out. Even the avant-garde box office is laughing it up. <laughs> How could I ever have doubted you? If you hadn't stuck to your guns and kept sending those invitations, this opportunity would have passed us by. See? I told you! All the times she'd refused in the past were all the more reason to keep inviting her, because it turns into a big talking point. Can you imagine if you'd gone with Jillian? You'd have been lucky to get half the ticket sales you've ended up with. True. Well, Jillian still needs to get a few more productions under her belt. What I'm getting from this line of dialogue between the two, Jillian, um, Jillian had um some more acting in her belt for that, but this Lynette was the first time that she ever performed stage as the lead role, most of all. And I don't think, and I, yeah, I don't think, I think it might, could have been Jillian. Again, the tracks to that deduction are not very clear. A little fuzzy on that. Do you have a moment, Director Mario? Oh. <laughs> yeah, she heard about Jillian. Ah, if it isn't the star of the show, uh, we were just talking about you. Hmm? Oh, and is that the legendary traveler with you? Yeah. I'm hey. guessing you're here to discuss the show with the director. <laughs> oh, you're a talented and hardworking actress, Lynette. It's no wonder you're getting such rave reviews. Rave reviews. This expression seems a bit unnatural. Despite his uh, effusive words, look in his eyes suggests he's not quite so delighted with the newfound stardom. I'll leave you artists to discuss your work in peace. Uh, Mary, you make sure you give your star performer and her friend your full attention. Mm-hmm. I certainly will. 
Lynette carries the fortunes of our entire troop on her shoulders. <laughs> What's that? Mr. Maloney. An investor, something, I think. I've never asked him. <laughs> so, uh, what can I do for the two of you? I'm afraid I'll have to dash soon as I'm meeting some friends from the newspaper. Otherwise, I'd love to stay longer. We won't take up too much of your time. We heard that the original script for The Lost Puppet was quite different from the final show. I'm kind of curious to know uh -huh. what the protagonist was like in that version. Oh! Well, this is a surprise. I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. It's not uncommon for scripts to undergo major changes as they're being brought to the stage. But I'm afraid there's not much to tell you in this case. The protagonist has stayed the same from the beginning to end. A mechanical puppet with a bumbling body but a sensitive soul. A stranger in time who doesn't belong. Stranger in time doesn't belong. Stranger. There's no doubt about it. You are the protagonist, and the protagonist is you. The success of one is the success of the other, and that's what made this show an artistic triumph. No doubt about it. You are the protagonist, and the protagonist is you. The success of one is the success of the other, and that's what makes it an artistic triumph. Mm. Sorry, you've lost me. Can you put it in plain words? <laughs> All right, then. Delving deep in the search of core truths is the job of an artist, after all. You shouldn't give your attention to early drafts of the script, Lynette. All it would do is sow confusion where you already have clarity. The current script is the final version because it is the best version. And your performance best brings that script to life. Why, if it weren't for you, I doubt any audience would give our show the time of day. Right. So, if everyone is happy, if everyone is happy with Lynette's performance, then, um, how do you explain this letter? What letter? Oh my goodness! Yeah, we've already that read that. Mirrors seem to appear surprised. Mirrors' expression is hard to read. Surprise seems destroyed. This work of destroyed. art, really. Art. Well, Director Mario, any idea who might have written it? No. Who on earth would write such nonsense? Um, we found it in the envelope containing the group photo. Could it be someone involved in the production? Absolutely not! Without Lynette, this show would be over. Everyone's hard work would go to waste. No, there's no way that this is someone from the troop. Well, uh, is there any way Lynette could lie low until this blows over? I don't think so, right? Yeah, maybe Jillian could fill in for me for a while. What? No way! Out of the question! The protagonist has to be played by Lynette! Jillian can't... She's just... 
Not what the audience is looking for. It's just not what the audience is looking for. Darius' eyes are darting around, lowering his voice. Ah, I've got it. It's a competitor. Yes, this letter must be from a competitor of ours who's trying to get under Lynette's skin. You can't lie low. That's just what they want you to do. The moment you step back from performing, they'll put their rumor mill into overdrive and drag us through the mud. They're just waiting for their chance to kick us while we're down. A competitor? Really? Definitely. Those lowlifes. Slander and libel are all their specialties. They drown out the truth with a flood of misinformation. And they stop at nothing once they get riled up. Uh, you sound very familiar with their methods. You have a particular suspect in mind? Oh, there's so many of them out there. Fame always seems to attract haters. No matter what you do to try and keep everyone happy. But don't worry, I will get to the bottom of this. Stay strong, Lynette, and keep up the good work on stage. I have to go and meet my friends from the newspapers now, but rest assured, I'll be discussing countermeasures with them. Yeah. Unless so, these friends of yours a competitor, huh? are the one who posted threatening letter. I think that's it. Mm, I kinda doubt it. We've dealt with those types before. Usually their goal is to steal our venue for their own show, or to cover up a scandal by planting a story to divert public attention. But, at the moment, I don't think anyone's got a reason to do any of that stuff. Let alone pull a stunt like this. A threat letter is quite extreme. Yeah, say that again. Besides, when I felt that evil stare, I'm pretty sure it was coming from somewhere backstage. So that rules out a lot of people. Only does. I'm actually more concerned about Mary you. When I mentioned Jillian, his reaction was pretty unusual. <laughs> yeah. So, you noticed that too, right? Especially since Maloney mentioned that the initial plan was to cast Jillian as the lead. Initial plan, you said. Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly but surely thinking that it's Jillian. He's coming back at Lynette for uh, taking her position as the lead role. Sounds like there was an original protagonist, as well as an original script. Hmm. I should probably go talk to her. Unless I'm, I'm completely off the march. Which might be possible as well. Uh, do you know where she lives? Yep. She told me she lives in the Flow of Sandra. Flow Sandra. Okay. That's where we're going then. Welcome here. All right. Um. Definitely not pleased to see net. That's for sure. I've been to the Flow of Sandra plenty of times before. And this is the first I'm hearing about me not being welcome. Things are different around here. You might be used to a crowd of bootlicking morons fawning over you wherever you go, but not down here. We... We know what you are. Okay. I just skipped a, <laughs> a bit of dialogue because I don't know what she is. Bootlicking morons? 
with Beijing Mo. Mm. Yeah, she's definitely got a bone to pick with you, I guess. I don't know. I've never met this kid before. Gina, stop that! Go home now! Jillian! Oh, so. Okay. So this wasn't Jillian, this was Gina. Yes, her daughter? Jillian's daughter, right? No, but. How many times do I have to tell you? That had nothing to do with Lynette. If you don't leave right now, I swear I'll... I'll... I'll never invite you to one of my shows ever again. Jillian? I... I... <laughs> Just because Lady Farina speaks highly of you, it doesn't mean you're all that. A few more choice words from Gina. She storms off. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong-willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. Yeah, but there are some things that um, Gina said it's that okay. uh, were I interesting. Have siblings too, so I get it. She's in her rebellious phase, huh? If you let angsty kids get you riled up, They'll drain all your energy. So don't worry. I won't let it get to me. <sighs> well, the situation's a little different in this case. But still, thank you. So, what brings you to the flu of Sandra? Um... Well, um... Came to see you. We heard about it from Maloney. He said you were originally supposed to play the lead. Maloney, huh? Of course he couldn't keep his mouth shut. I'm sorry. I never mentioned it because Director Mary was very clear that I mustn't let any of it affect you. Well, circumstances have changed. Because Lynette received this letter. What's this? <gasps> nice. Unless she's performing acting really well, I don't think uh, Jillian was the one who did it. Yeah. On Jillian's face, there's panic and doubt. Um, well, the center thinks that Lynette has uh, destroyed the show. Does it have anything to do with the protagonists? I... I don't know. Uh, who would do something like this? I don't know. Don't be scared, Jillian. Just tell us what you know. Okay, I'll try. It's true. I was originally cast as the lead in The Lost Puppet. Okay. I've worked with director Mary Yu many times before, but only in minor roles. The audiences and critics never had much to say about me. Nothing terrible, but nothing amazing either. Hmm. A few months ago, Mary Yu started working on a new show. So I plucked up the courage to ask him if I could take the leading role. He was hesitant, but he agreed to let me try for the part. We did a few rehearsals, everything seemed to be going okay. But then... There's... been a change of plan, Jillian. The leading role 
will now be played by Lynette. Lynette? But she always turns these things down, doesn't she? And that's why we cannot afford to waste this opportunity. Chilean, I understand how you must be feeling. But Maloney and myself have to do what's best for the production as a whole. Next time, the lead will be yours. I promise. I was incredibly disappointed at first, but I also know full well that I don't have Lynette's star power. Without Lynette, how could we ever convince people to pay money to go and see a masked mind show? And if the show was a flop with me in the leading role, how would I answer to the director and the rest of the cast? Then, I got to meet you on stage and found that you're really down to earth, in a way that not many celebrities are. You were kind to everyone, and your performance wasn't bad. Whatever disappointment I had left at that point, I certainly wasn't about to take it out on you. By wasn't bad, you mean it wasn't great either. So, I'm guessing Mario changed the script to simplify the protagonist, make her a dumbed-down version of the mechanical puppet that I could actually play. He did make some changes to the script, yes. How do we get our hands on the original track? Who currently has it? Jaik, one of the other actors. He likes to collect Dr. Mariu's old drafts because he hopes to be a director himself one day. He also lives nearby. I can arrange for you to meet him at the tavern. Makes sense. I always see him talking to Mariu. Alright, see you at the tavern then. Tavern. Go to the tavern. So waiting at the tavern for a while. Sorry to keep you waiting. Jillian brought me up to speed on the situation. I'm here to help however I can. Here, this is the script you're after. It's very rough. Like he was constantly he was constantly editing it. Badly unreadable. That's always the way with pen and paper drafts. Even the final script is full of last-minute changes by the director. There should be a cleaner copy of the original script in here somewhere. Ugh, sorry, it's all a bit mixed up. I just grabbed the whole stack of paper since I was in a rush. No problem. Now activating search mode. I'll go through one page at a time. Okay. Now we <laughs> now we have the net. So what do we hear? Yeah. Wait, me, let me see. I should know. Uh, there are newspaper clippings in the monster notes. They're about shows of different styles. Uh, those on the first few pages have turned yellow. Which means... Alright. Uh, which means they must be quite old. In the situation, look for mentions of Mario. Okay.
Even for the early newspaper clippings, none of the headlines mentioned director Mario. In more recent years, there are many reports praising Mario as a forward-thinking director. The greats of his of his area are era. Investigate the manuscript. Mario's original script is littered with amendments. Slightly illegible. Read carefully. That's success. The reason it's so hard to read is that it's been edited with correction fluid multiple times. I'd estimate that each line was rewritten at least three times, but Mary wasn't happy with his edits. You say what you mean. This script seemed to be Mary's older words. Some photographs of the live performances are attached. In proof. Failed. Uh, the photos from recent years show fancy venues and English sets, but the earlier photos show much humbler venues. I don't see anything else not worthy. Alright, let's read original script. Let's see what differences there are between the current version of the Lost Puppet, puppet and the original script. Read carefully. <laughs> Even worse. Oh, goodness gracious. After a quick read for the script, I understand the gist of the story. Even in search mode, I don't get checked. This is... featureless. Uh, the official script for the Lost Puppet details how the dancing puppet protagonist is rejected by humanity and then begins searching for the meaning of life. Carefully. Okay, now we're good. In Act 4, the protagonist loses the ability to dance due to wear and tear in her search tree. It's a note saying some cursory movements to get the point across will suffice. suffice. Right. The audience's focus will be on the fancy set and the extras. Alright, because that's it. The protagonist returns there. to the ruins where she began. Uh, the protagonist the returns to the ruins where she began. Companions. She oh. dances until her joints Actually. have rusted stiff and mechanical parts are falling from her body. Okay. Hmm. Yep, that's not something a novice could hope to pull off after just a few months of rehearsals. Yeah. The basic plot is the same. She loses the ability to dance due to wear and tear in her secretary. But there's much more emotion behind the scene. The memory of her former companions coming to peace with her life. Simple set and solo performance means the lead actress has to carry the whole scene herself. A much more demanding role than in the final script. <sighs> Frankly, I think that the original script is much better, and the original lead is the best fit. Jillian, <laughs> shall I go tell Mario to put you back in the leading role? <laughs> What? Are you serious? But the next show is at the Opera Epicles. It's such a huge opportunity. But not such a rare one for me, though, right? That's different. This isn't you as part of a magic duo. It's a chance to star as the main character in a show. You'll reach whole new heights of fame. Um, fame in small doses has its perks, but too much and I'll get overloaded. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. Doesn't have an event mode. Doesn't have a um, fame mode. It doesn't have um, <laughs> an interview mode. Yeah. But if you play the lead, the fame will be yours. And I get to be free. Sounds like a win-win, don't you think? It'll never work! There's no way Director Maryu or Maloney would ever agree to it. The set for Act 4 would need to change, as would all the marketing materials. And that would mean asking Maloney for a lot more Mora. Changing actors at the last minute is just too risky. If anything went wrong, it could bankrupt the whole troupe. Yeah, I mean, it's a toss between the two. Plus, Maloney's friends have already published a ton of articles saying how this is the role that Lynette was born to play. No one else can play the protagonist now. Hmm. If Lynette quit the show and I took her place? Um, if Lynette quit the show and I took her place... Mm, it would destroy reputations of friends, I suppose. If Lynette left, they'd sooner stop the whole show than let me take her place. Stop the whole show? But all the people in the troop, months and months of everyone's hey. hard work would all be for nothing. Be for nothing. No wonder Mario will say anything to try and chip it on board. Is there any other way? Uh, turn check bonuses, clue. Uh, changes to the official script. Literally altered master plus three. Yeah, it's better. Judging from those documents, Maria's true intention seems to be... I have an idea. You do? What is it? Um, well, all you need to do is this. Explain your idea to the group. That's a bold plan. I'm in. Okay, good. You know, it's a little crazy, but it might actually work. No, no way. It's not worth taking such a huge risk just for a chance to be in the spotlight. I mean, I don't even know what the plan is, but apparently she's... it's not suited for Jillian. Jillian, you said before, whatever disappointment I had left, I wasn't about to take out on you. In other words, that disappointment is still there, but you've kept it bottled up inside. Be honest. You still hope to play the leading role, don't you? I... But the thought of putting so many people out just for my sake? You think they'd be put out? Hmm. That's not how I see it. Jillian, you were more dedicated than anyone during the rehearsals for the original script. We all saw how hard you worked for this role. Yeah, though I wasn't there to see it. But I trust her, Jake. And I think you know that unless we decide to make a stand here, the path we're on is only going to take us further and further from our dreams. All of us. So take it from me. You would not be putting us out. Not one bit. Whether the plan succeeds is up to you. You guys, I, I, okay, let's do it. I will play my part. All right. Yes, I knew you'd come around. All right, I'll let the rest of the troop know and we'll start preparing immediately. <sighs> Wonderful. And this solves everything. 
Wait, but eh? what about the threat letter? Do you have any idea who sent it? Mm. As long as we stick to the plan, I'll give up the lead role, so it won't matter anymore, right? But surely you want to know who it's from. If they're out there and no one's keeping an eye on them, what if they come looking for you? Um, I doubt they will. It's supposed to be a threat, but they didn't even say what would happen if I don't meet their demands. Plus, the handwriting is kind of childish. Doesn't look like a professional intimidator to me. <laughs> yeah, because she knows. Uh, no, not yet. Going to be, uh, brought in, in, uh, in more than half an hour. Who knows? Maybe it was just a fan of yours having a moment. A fan? Of me? Yeah? A uh, Gina, maybe? Maybe there's someone out there who really appreciates your talent. Even in the supporting roles. Should the letter be from one of Jillian's men? A lot of uh, fatometer here. No, not one of her fans. I don't think there's any solid ev evidence. Mm, it's getting late. We should be leaving. Huh? So suddenly? Come on. All right. Okay, so Lynette grabs your hand and leads you out of the tavern. You seem to hear a sound. Uh, you notice the faint sound of sobbing in the corner as you live in the tavern. I... I'm such an idiot. Um. Sorry for manhandling you. You looked like you were seconds away from figuring out who sent the letter, so I had to act fast. Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> it was Gina, Jillian's sister. See? I was right. I was right. I mean, it was pretty obvious. She was so resentful for, uh, for Lynette for casting her mom uh, who was going to be leading role in the show side. Just because Lady Farina speaks highly of you, it doesn't mean you're all that. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong-willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. Farina hasn't released her official review of The Lost Puppet yet. Which means Gina disobeyed her sister and secretly came to watch her at work. I guess she must have snuck into the drinks reception and overheard our conversation with Farina. Yeah. She idolizes Jillian, both as an older sister and an actress. And she watched as the dream role oh, Jillian no had been waiting to sister. play for so long okay. got snatched away from her by some amateur who's never acted before. Okay. To make matters worse. All the critics were hailing this amateur as a perfect fit for the role. And even Fontaine's former biggest star was praising her abilities. Well, it was too much for her to take. She wrote that letter in a fit of anger. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Aren't you gonna confront her about it? Like I said, getting angry at angsty teenagers is draining. Besides... If it was my younger brother or sister, and they found out I'd been treated unfairly or had an opportunity stolen from me, they'd definitely do something far worse. Oh, yes. I can imagine. I was in Jillian's position once. 
Back when Linny and I were starting out, before we got famous, we just had to take things a day at a time. Doing our shows, slowly trying to build up our reputation. So I can understand Gina's frustration. Still, she could definitely use some pro tips on how to write a threat letter. No wonder she's so hostile towards you. It must have been the one giving you that evil stare, right? No, the way she looks at me is indignant. Frustrated, but not malicious. Plus, she didn't even try to hide how she felt. No, she didn't. Whoever was giving me that evil stare was backstage. Blending into the crowd at a drinks reception is one thing. But trying to blend in backstage, where everyone's on high alert waiting to be called on stage, would be a lot more difficult. Okay. I'll find out who it is before too long. In two days' time, at the next show, I think it will become very clear. So, two days later then. On that note, guess I'll see you at the Opera House. Bye for now. Bye, Lynette. So... It's until two days later, yeah. I'm going to do just that. Lynette and Jillian are busy getting ready, so... Please, come with me. Well, shortly after the phone shite into the Opera House, the curtains open. At one, in the ruins. That puppet in the middle. Is that Lynette? Ah. She's that. so pretty. Puppet in the audience. Is that Lynette? She's so pretty. Nope. That's Jillian. It's starting. Keep your voice down. Satanist, a dancer, has been abandoned in some ruins. He suspects it's because of a, of a health condition with her legs, she has, uh, which has affected her ability to dance. But then she finds the other abandoned puppets who look like just like her. Then does she realize her illness is a mechanical breakdown. It's just dancing puppets. Wow, I thought it would be hard to follow, but in the end it was actually very clear. Even though her face was expressionless and she didn't speak the whole time, I felt like I could really understand how the protagonist was feeling. Mm hmm. Act 2 Journey. Some mechanical puppets believe in a myth. At the end of the world, there's a god of puppets who can turn puppets into human beings. But tell, tell that to the Wanderer. Uh, or Starmouth, for that matter. Uh, and so the protagonist and her companion begin their quest. The myth is a lie, read by someone with nothing but contempt for a puppet kind. At the end of their journey, they are kidnapped, handled, metaled down, and abused. The protagonist helped her companion to escape, but in the process became trapped under the rubble of a crumbling building. She closes her, eye, closes her eyes and enters into a deep sleep. Director Mary, you really is a master of his craft. And so is the actress in the lead role. I have a friend who saw the show on the opening day. They thought the critics overstated how good it was. But I gotta say, the protagonist is incredible. Act 2 closes to thunderous applause. I the can't crowd. believe it's only been a few days since the last show. Lynette's improved so much. Just... Wow! I'm speechless. Words simply cannot do justice to the sheer excellence we witnessed from Lynette on stage today. <laughs> Unless this wasn't Lynette at all, but uh, Jillian. Your pension for the hyperbolic strikes again, Almery. Clearly you weren't at a loss for words when you were writing your article. I saw you hand it to the journalist. Trying to get your critique into the papers the moment the show is over, are you? <laughs> well, you know how it is. The early critics get all the readers. Wouldn't you agree, Mary Yu? Uh, <sighs> hmm? What's the matter? 
Uh, cat got your tongue? Ah, the first half was a huge success. Even I could tell the acting was top tier. My uh, apologies, Mr. Maloney. Please excuse me for a second. I need to have a little talk with my actors. Oh, uh, very well. Hey, while you're at it, uh, this might be a good time to talk future collaborations with Lynette. <laughs> Are you guys sure this is going to work? What if Director Maryhew pushes back? We're already halfway there. We can't back out now. All we need to do is stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. What is this plan that you're so intent on hiding from me, hmm? D Director Maryhew, I, uh... I thought you were talking to Maloney and the critics. Korantan and Armory have both finished their articles. I went to greet them as a mere formality, but you seem to have availed yourselves of my absence during the first half to defy me. What have you done? Was that really Lynette playing the lead role? Well done, Director. You saw through it. Ta -da. Ta -da. There he is, Lynette's voice behind him. Behind, beside her is the protagonist, but without Director the costume mask. I was the one playing the lead role just now. I switched costumes and masks with Jillian so that I could be the protagonist's companion and stay out of the limelight. Lynette, why on earth would you do this? You know my acting is amateur. The only reason I'm being seen as a pro, let alone a pioneer, is because you have critics supporting the show. But right now, there's a whole audience out there. No hope of paying them all up. If they'd seen me in the leading role during the first half, they wouldn't be expecting anything more. But what happens now that they've seen Jillian in the role? If you force me to play the lead in the second half, they'll be wondering why is the actress suddenly giving such an underwhelming performance right at the climax of the whole story? Is it because she's not a good enough actress to play the role? Were the critics wrong? Or is this director not all he's cracked up to be? These are just some of the questions that will be on everyone's minds during the second half. And those questions will follow them out the doors of the theater after the show ends. Do you think the critics will have any credibility then? There's only one way for you to save your reputation. And that's to keep Jillian as the lead all the way to the end. Absolutely not. I'd sooner announce that we're having technical difficulties and need to stop the show. If I keep Jillian as the lead for the second half, what do you think will happen in the curtain call when she takes her mask off? Everyone will see that we've changed actors. What will your fans think? They're only here because of you. And what about all the critics who support you? If we get on the wrong side of them, it'll be the death of the whole show! There'd be tickets to refund, fines to pay for the breach of contract! The whole troop's hard work would go down the drain! Don't you see how much this would cost us? You can't just take a job on a whim, then abandon your responsibility the moment you don't feel like doing it anymore! You're playing games with other people's hopes and dreams! Director, marry you, please. You're not being fair to Lynette. Actually, Jillian, he's half right. I did kind of take this on a whim. But my responsibility here is making sure you get back the role that belongs to you. 
<laughs> and I guess part of that responsibility lies with me, considering I badgered you into accepting the job. Hey, Miss Miss here. And I guess part of that responsibility lies with me, considering I badgered you into accepting the job. Look who finally decided to show up. Bring all your props. <laughs> Sorry I'm a little late to the show. Work's been keeping me pretty busy lately. Linny? Uh, what do you want? Do you think you can snap your fingers and make all my problems magically disappear? That might be a little tricky. But instead, I could make something else magically appear. What's that? What's this? A draft complaint letter, my contract, your legal fees, reimbursement for the tickets, and an advance on the penalty fee for breach of contract. Mr. Mario, I'm stepping down from the leading role, regardless of whether you choose to cancel the rest of today's show. If you do suffer unforeseen financial losses from this, you're free to seek damages as per the contract. And if you want to file a lawsuit, there's a draft here that you can use if you need it. What? <laughs> I can't believe this. You're literally handing me a lawsuit against you with a straight face. Of course. All this Mora, it's a pittance to you, isn't it? <laughs> Must be nice to have the luxury of prior success and fame. Look at us. We're huge stars. One minute we want to go on stage. The next we feel like backing out of the contract. But that's okay. We're famous. We can afford it. You have no respect for other people's work. You're treating other people's hopes and dreams like a big joke. You don't give a hoot how much this show means to other people. You don't even care that the whole production might have to shut down because of you. That's not true. I do care. And I'm under no illusion as to how much this show means to you. Oh. Brilliant deduction there. Of course it means a lot to me. This is my show. That's the only reason I asked you to be in it in the first place. Really? Then why do your eyes tell a different story? The way you look at me... It's full of contempt. Almost as if... I've destroyed your work of art. Huh? So oh, it was Mario. He's the one who was looking at me. And... What? I... I would never think that! A couple days ago, I asked some associates to do some digging for me. I was interested to know who else you invited to play the lead apart from Lynette. Surprise, surprise. Turns out that all the other famous actresses you asked either had prior commitments or weren't a good fit for the role. They all turned you down. And I would have turned you down too, if not for an unlikely set of coincidences. You didn't send those invitations because you were looking for a better actress than Jillian, but because your investor wanted a big name in your show, right? Director Mariu! You are stay that uh, Jillian is standing actress. His fame was the key factor, and that was the one thing she had. To get Maloney on your side, you chose to make Jillian the understudy, and then look for an opportunity for her to take the lead. But then, Lynette actually accepted your invitation. And her acting debut was sure to attract attention. I bet you were torn at first, weren't you? Do you stick to the tried and tested formula? Choose Lynette, use her celebrity to get the critics on your side so that you and your investors can line your pockets? 
Or do you choose Jillian? So that you and your longtime collaborator can stage the show of your dreams. The original, unedited version of the lost puppet. Whether you did it because of pressure from your investors or because you were lured in by the money, ultimately, you betrayed yourself by choosing Lynette. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't betray myself. You mentioned prior success and fame earlier, but you're a well-known director yourself with countless works to your name. Wouldn't that make you successful, too? Or maybe, deep down, none of your current achievements really count as success to you. Right now, you have an opportunity to send Jillian onto that stage and perform the second half as you always imagined it. Faithful to your original script. Your work would be displayed for all of Fontaine to see in its true, perfect form. Did... Did you say... Perfect? Do you keep pursuing a child of such sense that you don't value? And the trust of your own artist integrity? Or... Will you act now before Maloney and the critics can protest and make your dream come true on the stage? And Jillian's dream. In fact, the dreams of the whole troop. The whole troop? Director Mariu? Actually, most of the money Lenny brought came from us. We all chipped in. We've worked with you for many years now. Your troupe has been here for you all the way from the empty theaters where we first performed to the Opera House today. We watched as you slowly started down a path you used to despise. The path of powerful connections, drinks receptions, backdoor deals with critics and collaborations based on fame instead of talent. But this is just a temporary measure. I, I did it for the good of the troop. And, and besides, this is how the whole industry works. Everyone else is doing it. Yes, we know. Back when you started, you had to bite the bullet and do these things to keep the troop afloat. But then what happened? You began to embrace these methods more and more, becoming so reliant on them that every show you put out is overhyped by the media, and every script you write is edited to suit some celebrity's needs. Surely you must have noticed what's happening. While we've been performing at bigger and bigger theaters with each show, the applause is getting quieter and quieter each night, and the criticism from people who've seen the show is growing. Maloney's friends are sycophants. They don't care if the audience is disappointed because the show doesn't live up to their glowing reviews. They praise the things they like and skirt around the things they don't. Look, I know everyone's using the same promotional tactics, but does that really make it okay? Well, it's... It's just a stopgap solution. I... As soon as I've made enough Mora, I'll stop. Things will be different next time. I promise. Next time, huh? Yeah. Next time, you won't use your connections. Next time, you won't pay off the critics. Next time, you'll let Julian play the lead. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. If you make some money once, you'll want to do it again, then again. Slowly but surely, you turn your back on your dreams. I won't turn my back on my dreams any longer, Director Maryu. Never again. Me neither. It's the day. Time to live your dreams.
<laughs> yeah. I had dreams too. What? A tree. The rubble. An unknown period of time elapsed before a group of mechanical puppets finally cleared the rubble. We, the protagonist, then reactivated her. I told her, you have been buried here for years. Mechanical puppets now rule the world. It turned out that the puppets who had started the uprising were none other than the protagonist's companions, whom she had rescued all those years ago. The protagonist was now revered as a hero by all of puppet kind. Mechanical puppets asked the protagonist what she wishes for. She only wishes for one thing. Huh. The plot here seems a little different from what the review said. The protagonist wanted to return to the stage, so the puppets replaced all her parts with the latest ones available, built her a grand opera house, and summoned a huge audience. And in the end, she forgot herself amidst the applause and cheers of her fellow puppets. Hey, no spoilers! Huh? Wait, hang on, that's not even what's happening. The set has changed back to the one from the first act. Oh, Archons. Please let this work out. No need to be so nervous, Director Maryu. We only told you Lynette would be quitting the show to get you to make a decision. We wanted you to believe that this show would have to end after today, no matter what you decided. But in truth, I believe that if we choose our words carefully, there's no reason we can't get Maloney to come around and keep the show going. Let us put in and set phone people to work. You should definitely keep in touch. You really thought this plan through. But I'm not upset about what you've done. What's worrying me now isn't how Maloney will react or whether the show will get cancelled. It's the audience. I've always thought the original script is better, but will it move them like I've always hoped? When Jillian does her curtain call, will they applaud her? What if people only came to see the show for Lynette? And because of the reviews, what if they don't really care about the show at all? It feels like I've been hiding inside my safe little castle for too long. And now I'm scared to go outside the walls and hear what people really think. We're right here with you. We'll watch it to the end. Their lives for the revolution. Their bodies lie buried in the ruins where they first met. The protagonist returns to the ruins alone, where her journey first began. She performs one last dance for the graves of her companions. Her circuitry burns out, her thoughts come loose and fall from her body. But she keeps dancing until her body completely shuts down. A stage in her thousands of years, where at last, it's finally found reason for dancing. Wow, okay, this ending is much better. Okay, resounding success in the audience. I love how they brought back the set from Act 1 and gave it a whole new meaning. What a fantastic twist. Time for the curtain call. It's the moment of truth. The applause continue after I take off the mask. Yes, there's only one way to find out. I could always leave my mask on. You never know. If it's Farina uploading, of course they're going to. 
Yeah. Hmm. And this is what fame looks like when it's truly deserved. Ooh. Jillian, you were amazing! Cyro was tearing up when you did your final solo dance. Ah, uh, well, so are you. Really? I was so nervous. My legs felt like they turned to jelly. What looked like an actor unsteady on her feet was in fact a poignant expression of the protagonist's frailty in her last moments. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I can't teach any more of that. <sighs> hey, Mario! What the heck was that? Why wasn't Lynette playing the lead? Our articles are already going to press. You better have a good explanation for this. Yeah, he has. <laughs> um, it was my... Hey, now, it was all of our... Hold on. Okay, hold on. The decision was mine, and mine alone. They had nothing to do with it. If you have any concerns, gentlemen, then please direct them to me. Marry you? So it was you? Well then, I trust you'll have no objection to me pulling the plug on this production. I... Uh, uh... Oh, well, uh, his worst fear is coming true. Time for Act 5. Director Maryu, Mr. Maloney, what on earth is going on? Why was Lynette not in the lead role? <laughs> oh, gee. The old switcheroo. Okay. Ah. It took a lot of convincing for me for her to accept the role, and I had to turn down some big work opportunities to come and watch her performance today. You have some explaining to do. Uh, Lenny, it was all his idea. Marry you. Uh, explain yourself. Wait. Lenny, as a matter of fact, this was a piece of performance art. In this play, the masks and costumes serve to obscure the differences between characters, and by extension, the difference between human and machine. Mm -hmm. We took that idea to the next level with an actor swap, blurring the lines between one performer and the next. So, it's in service of the ambitious artistic goals of the production. Uh, what? It's similar to deceiving the audience in a magic show. We employed this technique as a means of breaking the fourth wall. It allows the audience to more intuitively understand the cognitive dissonance felt by the protagonist as a machine trying to reconcile the notion of her humanity. The audience's experience mirrors the protagonist's own confusion and becomes part of the artistic performance itself. Yeah. Uh, hold up. What is this nonsense? Oh, I see. Well, bravo, Director Maryu. You even had me fooled. That's probably more because you just don't really understand avant-garde art very well, Lenny. 
Maybe so, maybe so. Well, perhaps it went over my head, but I'm sure our experts here saw the whole thing coming a mile away. Uh, uh, um... You must have worked it out by the end of the first half, surely. Mr. Almery, I just heard that you managed to write your review after just the first two acts. Yeah, I am sure that will help direct Mario by setting future audiences up for a surprise twist at Ahem. Uh, Yes, you're right. Director Mario and I are old friends. You should have said something. Then I could have played along even better. <laughs> uh, yes, well, to deceive the audience, you must first deceive your closest companions. <laughs> I have to give credit to Lynette and her experience in performing magic. That's what inspired me to take my art to the next level. <laughs> hmm? You mean your show was partly inspired by Lynette's background in magic? Well, in that case, I'll have to plug it to everyone I know. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Unfortunately, I think Mr. Maloney is going to cancel the show. <laughs> what? What the switch? Oh, the final launch on so well. Cancel the show? Mr. Maloney, is this true? Uh, while I accept that deceiving the audience in the manner you did uh, certainly has artistic merit, this is not a magic show, and we don't want our audience demanding their money back. Hey? A very valid criticism, and one that I humbly accept. If that happens, we're prepared to reimburse and apologize to any audience members who weren't satisfied with the experience. Yeah, but based on their reaction today, I think that what most people want to see is an excellent piece of theater and not some celebrity cameos. That's what I think, and what happened today. Plus, it looks like Jillian is better than me at delivering the excellence people want to see. I'm sure audiences will be very happy with the show if she's allowed to stay in the leading role. Yeah. Uh, some reviews have said that Lynette's gave the performance of the year. Didn't you say Jillian's was the performance of a lifetime? <laughs> Maloney, uh, I believe there should still be time to tweak my article. From the look on Lynette's face, I think she's being sincere. Mm -hmm. Oh, one other thing. We managed to get a meeting with Lady Farina earlier. All thanks to the Traveler's reputation, of course. Yeah. Anyway, she agreed to write a review focusing on Jillian's performance and the quality of the show as a whole. She promised to give her honest opinion. And I'm sure today's audience will be discussing her performance too. There's sure to be a variety of opinions. But what about you, Mr. Corantin? Huh? How would you rate this show? Oh, I mean, art at its finest, clearly. Uh, but I'll have to give it some thought before I decide exactly what to write. Oh, of course. Always good to put some thought into these things. Especially now, with a growing range of voices out there. I imagine competition for readers becomes more fierce when everyone's discussing the topic. Yeah, tell me about it. <sighs> Corintan, Amory, let's go. South face melody leaves faith in tow. Yunling is Jesus. <laughs> Alright. And talk to everyone. Talk to director Mario. First, 
Let's talk to Jaik and Cyril. Do you think this move needs jazzing up a little? Not jazzing up per se. I was thinking more like break it down, you know? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh what about Gina and Jillian. Gina? You snuck in? When? I thought I told you no visiting me at work. Well, she clearly is a stubborn child, so. I'm sorry, Jillian, but I had to come. <sighs> Beyond her blames. Who's Lenny anyway? He's still he's not there anymore. Thank you both so much. Without the two of you, who knows how much further down that cynical path I would have gone. Yeah. I always told myself that once I'd made enough Mora, I'd get back to doing what I loved. But somewhere along the way, I started to lose sight of what that was. Just like those critics with their dishonest reviews, I became all about the trappings of success at the expense of the art itself. Yeah, well, at least to get into your senses just in time, and you've got an amazing group of talented people behind you. You're right. Yes, I'm a very lucky man. Anyway, enough about my problems. What are we going to do about the threat letter that Lynette received? No BD. All water under the bridge. I've been looking into it a lot over the past couple of days, but it doesn't seem like it was one of our competitors after all. Wasn't. Ah, yes, about that. Um, Lynette, do you have a moment? Mm -hmm. Wait, you're Jillian's sister, right? I'm sorry. Gina insisted on coming to see Lynette. I couldn't stop her. And it just shot me a glance. Uh, yeah. And it just shot me a glance. I think she's unsure which mode to use in this situation. Hmm. That's just. Oh. Oh, performance. What's she talking about? Never heard of it. Do I have to be able to fix? Yeah, great. Worse. Yeah, me neither. Wait. Uh, but. Oh, do you mean when we ran into you at the Fool of Sandra? And you said some mean things to me? As I recall, you were only trying to look out for your sister. It was just a few words spoken in anger. Don't worry. Whatever it was you said, I've already forgotten. Oh. <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like Gina knows what she did was wrong. Owning up to your mistakes and committing to do better in the future is what counts. 
I understand that feeling of wanting to stand up for your family when they're being mistreated. Really, I do. But next time, maybe consider a different tactic? Something you can pull off more effectively and without arousing suspicion. <laughs> All right, that's enough of giving her ideas. Got it. Thank you. Lynette. Why do I feel like I'm missing something here? Hey, here you are. I was wondering where you'd all run off to. Great! Everyone's in one place. That makes this so much easier. <laughs> yeah, but... Oh. <laughs> what do you think? It's group photo time! We have to commemorate the debut of the Lost Puppet Director's Edition. Okay, everyone, we all have pretty awkward smiles on our faces in the photo from Hotel de Boer. So this time, yeah, no forced smiles allowed. Oh, am I really not allowed to force a smile? For you? I'll try, I suppose. I think I can manage. You think? <laughs> Lynette, Traveler, come on! You two should be right in the middle. Oh, yeah, of course. Three, two, one, smile! See? It's into a smile. Why why is she not looking at the camera? Why why is she looking at us? A roaring success. A roaring success. Line of sight. A little bit off. Fine, as long as your smile is genuine. 